this is Frode, and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV. Today we have another great book, The Inner Citadel, by Pierre Hadot. The Inner Citadel, subtitle, The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Pierre Hadot was an honorary professor at the College of France, and an intellectually rigorous person who studied Marcus Aurelius for 20 years, extensively. And uh, this book is uh, all about uh, giving us a deeper insight into Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor philosopher of the second century, his meditations. And uh, he also gives us a deeper understanding of the practical philosophy of Stoicism. And uh, more, uh, it tries to uh, make us uh, see what we can see of uh, Marcus Aurelius' character through his writing. And uh, of course the book was packed with big ideas, so uh, uh, before I go into the ideas, I just want to mention that if you're into Stoicism and ancient philosophy and the ancient practical philosophy, ancient wisdom, then uh, I think you'll, uh, you'd be wise to start with this book because it gives us really deep insight which will make us understand the other books a lot more from the authors and uh, the philosophers themselves. You can check out more Stoicism from uh, our episodes on Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, Nisonius Rufus, Hall, uh, Ryan Holiday, and last one, William B. Irvine. Now let's jump into the big ideas. First one is virtue. What was virtue? Well, it the uh, virtue is uh, practically living at your highest potential moment to moment. And uh, through this word, it doesn't uh, really um, come through so well, but the ancient Greeks, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and the Stoics had a word, arete, which translates into virtue or excellence, that has a deeper meaning of living at your highest potential, moment to moment. The sage, the, that was the person who was conscious every single moment and present and strived to live at his highest potential and do everything as best as possible could. Now this can be a bit frightening and stressful but uh, it uh, basically goes down to the choices we make. As Abraham Maslow talks about in his book Toward a Psychology of Being, he says that every single thing we do, thing we choose to do, makes an imprint upon our consciousness. So we uh, sub a subconscious so we can either step forward into growth and make a choice that we are proud of and that we know we are uh, is the best thing to do, or we can take a step back into safety, which uh, we know is less than we are capable of doing. Now, uh, Matthew was pretty uh, tense about this and said that if you deliberately plan on being less than you are capable of being, then I warn you that you'll be deeply unhappy for the rest of your life. And of course, what one can be, one must be. Now, to get more practical, how do we live with Arte? Well, Arte was the meta-virtue for the Stoics, among the four virtues of wisdom, or truth, and justice, and uh, courage, and self-mastery, or temperance as they call it. Now, these were uh, all virtues that uh, they strove to embody through their entire lives, which would help them live with Arte. And uh, to get a bit practical here, wisdom is um, the distinction between what's good and bad. Good goals to pursue in life, bad goals to pursue in life. Good actions in life, bad actions in life. And number one tip here, start reading the works of the greatest thinkers in history. That will give you a pretty good idea of uh, what's good and what's bad. Next, justice. This is all about service to the human community of our entire world. It basically means doing selfless service to other people, having a higher purpose that is bigger than yourself. And in uh, the Bhagavad Gita, which, uh, in the translation by Eknat Esmeron, we talk about selfless service. This is what it's all about, justice. Serving the human community. You can do this by having a purpose, working toward it daily. 
Courage? That means this is all about uh, having the courage. This is very much a blend between justice and self-mastery. Uh, having the courage to step up to your highest potential and do the things you need to do to serve the world. And the self-mastery of overcoming that resistance you can feel when you sit down to do your work, do your creative writing or creative thinking or, or even when you work out or anything. My number one tip here, install the mantra, just get started when you go into those situations. Because the research has proven that when you just get started with doing a thing, the resistance fades and you suddenly feel inspired and uh, you don't feel so anxious. This helps me every single day as I work out and do this work. And of course, self-mastery. Number one tip here, mini habits. A book by Stephen Geis. Install one small habit that you will do every single day, one habit at a time. And eventually, your self-discipline will become stronger and stronger. Now, how can you live with our day? Think about that. Next big idea is soul. What is the soul? Well, it's what uh, the Stoics called the daimon. The daimon is you. It's the, your spirit, your soul, the, the, the most true sense of who you truly are. It's not the thoughts that bubble up in your mind, the feelings that you feel, or what, um, how you look like, or anything like that. It's you. It's the God within you. And the distinction here is that the inner citadel is where the daimon, or the soul, hangs out. It's uh, this uh, little fortress where, uh, here's the fortress, let's say that this is a citadel, and here is your daimon. This is a place where nothing can get through. Anything can happen in your life. Uh, people can say what they, uh, what they want to you. You might uh, be hurt, you might actually be physically hurt and lose a hand or anything, but nothing can get into your directing mind, as they call it. The daimon, the inner citadel. It is an, an indestructible fortress. Nothing can get to you. Nothing can des decide which actions you are going to take, or the way you choose to think about things. But, what is the number one way of destroying a fortress? The answer is, from within. From our own judgments. The Stoics were ruthless about this. The, uh, one of the number one rules uh, they uh, so, sought to follow was not to judge. Marcus Aurelius says, suppress your judgments. Why? Because our judgments about things that happen are the only things that are making us unhappy. The, uh, they are only the subjective perceptions, how we see things, of what happens which are really objective. Reality. So, uh, for example, you can... Uh, no. The, let's see it this way. The Stokes would pretty much say that the number one way to be depressed and uh, unhappy is to judge everything that happens. Everything you do, everything you think, everything you feel, everything other people say, you think, and do, what happens around you, judge it. Say, this is bad. This, this is bad. The pen fell down. Th that is bad. Why? Because I have to bend down and it's so heavy. And uh, the antidote, the way we can live happy lives and live peacefully, calm, with true energy, it's a two-step process. One is to observe what happens. We observe. The pen fell down. All right, we observe that. That uh, everybody with eyes can see that. The second step is describe what happens. Hmm. We observe the, mm, the pen fell down, uh, and then we say the pen fell down. The third step. There is no third step. Because we don't add our judgments. The natural step would be, Oh, the pen fell down, how bad! Oh, now I have to pick it up. It's so disgraceful. And uh, why can it do this pen just stay in my hand? So, it's really simple. Observe what happens and describe it. Don't add your subjective judgments to it. 
You can imagine a judge sits there judging all people and everything that happens in his court and his chair, really judgmental, then decides, oh, I'm, I'm not going to judge anymore. It doesn't bring me any happiness or any, any other people. So he chooses to throw away his hammer and uh, not judge. It's a good way of living, which is also related to our next big idea, destiny. This is one of the most beautiful ideas I have ever encountered. In short, Marcus Aurelius and the Stoics talk a lot about that every single thing that happens to you was kind of predestined from the beginning of eternity. You are, the event which happens to you, the situation you are in right now, is interwoven with you from eternity, the beginning of time, existence, whatever. And take a real practical example. 10,000 years ago, if your ancestors didn't meet and mate, you wouldn't be here. 10,000 years ago, if two people didn't meet out in the savannah when they were on a hunt or something and decided to make kids, well, then you would be here. Or if uh, 500 years ago, people didn't uh, meet over a cup of coffee or, and uh, just to uh, start a relationship together and uh, have kids, you wouldn't be here. And in the same way, we can think about everything that happened in the past brought, uh, brought us to this moment and everything that happens in the future is up to us to create as positively as possible. So you can imagine. Okay, I say it like this. I imagine that there is an infinite string of me going into the future. All of the actions I take, living the Narte, stepping up to my highest potential, or back into safety, not doing that. So I get, but first imagine an infinite string of me, doing everything I possibly can, live as morally as possible, serve the human community, do everything possible I can. And that becomes a bright, reverberating race of goodness which uh, positively impacts the entire world. In, throughout eternity, throughout thousands, ten thousands of years forward. Or I can look at an infinite string of me in a dark, depressive funk. Doesn't uh, do much positive to other people. I only I know, do selfish actions and uh, step back into safety. Doesn't have much uh, positive influence. But why is this important? Well, we all have a tendency to judge what happens around us and not accept what happens. Now, knowing that everything that happens was interwoven with us from the beginning of eternity, the Stoics have something called the art of acquiescence. Acquiescence. I think I got that right. Maybe? Or an S? Yes, art of acquiescence. And Nietzsche, the German philosopher, calls it amor fati. which means a love of fate, or a love of destiny. Instead of uh, fighting everything that happens around us uh, when we break our hand or somebody says something wrong to us, uh, we don't reach our goals in the time we want to. Instead of saying, God damn it, we say, Amor fati. I love what happens, because it was destined to happen. So, how can you renounce your judgments of what happens and love what happens. And our fifth big idea, progress. We're getting really deep here. It's, uh, oh, uh, I didn't sign up for this shit. This is heavy. But uh, I'm sorry if I'm a bit uh, obscure. I'm trying to be as practical as I can. Progress. Last of the idea. Marcus Aurelius uh, says in his meditations, don't wait for Plato's Republic. And Plato's Republic was kind of the vision of the ideal state, where everybody would be philosophers or actualizers, who, people who were striving to reach their highest potential, every single one of them. It would be a perfect state. Now, Marcus Aurelius uh, knew that this uh, wasn't going to happen anytime soon, as he was the emperor of ancient Rome. But uh, what he focused on, instead of that uh, unreachable go, he focused on the tiny bit of progress he could do every single day. The small things he could do, which would lead into huge results in the future. Remember our destiny into the future? So, the practical point here is, even though it seems like we're not making huge leaps of progress, 
and taking small steps every day. Over the long run, it becomes a huge step and we are much better off than we were five years ago or one year ago. So we uh, really don't uh, need to think that we need to uh, jump up to this high next level of personal development and really be one who has lived with Arte through his entire life. We just want to focus on the small steps we can take every single day. So remember, don't wait for Plagueis Republic. Love Destiny. Remember that you are interwoven with it from the beginning of time. And you can create a positive impact through eternity of the future. Judge. Throw away your hammer. Stop judging things. Observe and describe them. So, the only way to destroy, uh, the best way to destroy a fortress is to do it from within. From your judgments about the things that happen outside of you. Nothing else can destroy your fortress. You can destroy it from within. And virtue. We're gonna live with our day at our highest potential, moment to moment, through embodying wisdom, good and bad, justice, serving, courage, doing what you need to, and self-mastery, developing the habits of it. We know is in accordance with our purpose. Now, that was a bit of a meandering and uh, kind of deep look at uh, the Inner Citadel by Pierre Adot. I really enjoyed it and got a much better understanding of Stoicism. So, for now, what is the one idea that jumped out at you? Or the one aspect of an idea that jumped out at you? Not all of them. Remember progress? One. Now, think about what's the one step you can take towards embodying that idea a bit more in your life, starting today. Alright, get on that. As always, I'm looking forward to sharing more wisdom with you soon. Have an awesome day as we optimize and actualize. See ya.